Hello. Um, how's it going? Um, my name is William, and um, welcome, welcome to my talk. Um, today I'm talking about Nikila. Um, it's my first time being a speaker at Kiwi PyCon. I've done a couple of lightning talks in the past. Um, first time in 2013, and then again in 2015. So it's really great to come and do a full talk. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it and you learn a few things. Um, the slides are already up. You can go and grab them if you want, um, view them, you can, um, and, that, and that's the website to the Nikila website if you want to check that out too. And all my slides and all my content's all licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. All right, um, this, this talk's dedicated to my brother. Um, he's um, over in Sydney at the moment, and um, it's his birthday, so um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty wonderful. And um, this is a photo of him in, um, in Sydney. Um, yeah, you can, do you want to guess? You want to have a guess? Uh, yeah, no, nah, he's, the, he's the one in, in, the, in the suit there. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So um, I've actually just got to spend the last month with him um, in, in Sydney. I just arrived back in New Zealand last night, so um, it was pretty good to, uh, to spend some time with him. But yeah, I hope he has a great day. Okay, a bit about me. Um, so I'm, I trained as an artist. So I went to art school down in Wellington. I went to a learning connection. And while I was going to art school, um, I uh, taught myself how to code, um, basically to help my productivity of my artwork. Um, I, had an, I had an art web, or I have an art website still, um, and, but it was in, in WordPress. And I wanted to, uh, I switched across to, uh, to, to using the killer, um, using, using Python for it instead. I, which was a very good move. Um, a lot of my Python projects um, involve working with a lot of like, existing websites, remixing it um, and such. I do a lot with APIs and stuff, um, most, mostly, most, mostly uh, web-based stuff. Um, that's my email there, uh, willartcontrol.me, if you want to get hold of me. And there's my GitHub as well. Um, so what are static websites? Um, they're basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and they're delivered exactly as they're stored. Um, well, like you've got dynamic ones, which are like kind of generated from like a, a web application, like like WordPress, for example. Like they might have like a database and stuff. So, um, but yeah, static websites generated as as they are. Um, yeah, and static static sites are suitable for content that never or rarely updated. Um, but then modern static site generators solve this issue. Um, no longer do you have to like edit HTML um, and do horrible things like that with generators. It can um, make the process much easier. Okay, so why static? I kind of already talked about this a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, uh, I've, I've talked about this, let's carry on. Okay, reasons to use a static site, um, security. Um, since it is just HTML um, and CSS, it's, um, it's um, less, less vulnerable to, to hacking and stuff like that because there's like no logins or anything like that. You kind of only really need to secure the, the web server and such. Um, the files, yeah, they're much, much harder to, to, to change and stuff. Um, you don't need to update. You don't have to worry about um, updating your, um, like uh, plugins and, and such like that, um, just because the files are, are there and stuff like that. Um, cost and performance, you're only, you're only serving HTML and that's so you can, you can like run it on like an S3 bucket and that's so, um, yeah, it's, it's much cheaper and it can scale out um, really well as well. Um, and the lock-in as well is you, you own these files, you've got these, these, these files, you, you're not relying on um, like um, the database or anything like that, um, or proprietary systems. Um, some disadvantages with static websites um, to adding like dynamic um, functions um, um, like separately, like um, if you want like comments or stuff like that, you have to use like third party um, tools like um, Dis Disquis, um, I've got mentioned here um, for like comments. Um, it can also be hard to switch organizations from like what they're used to using, like um, like WordPress to, 
for example, to like something like Nikila because it's kind of just scary for them. Um, I've had this issue with like trying to convert Creative Commons New Zealand to it. It's never going to happen. <laughs> um, here's an example of a very popular static site uh, generator, um, Jekyll. Um, this was created by the uh, GitHub co-founder, co um, and GitHub pages run on this. Um, unfortunately, though, it is, it is Ruby, um, but it's still very popular. Um, Pelican, this is a Python um, static website generator. Um, Linux kernel uses it for their, uh, for their blog. Um, fortunately, they don't have a logo. I was quite, quite disappointed. I'm like searching for a Pelican logo in it and couldn't find one. So they, they really need a logo. Um, this Pelican's very similar to Nikila. Um, it's, but the development is not as strong. They don't have, um, it doesn't have as much features and stuff, but some people like it though. Um, Hugo. Um, I've actually been doing quite a bit with Hugo lately. It's, it's written in Go. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by how fast it is. It can just generate a site like that. Eh? Um, you could give it like 200 pages and it just processes it immediately. It's incredible. Um, also, the metadata can be um, defined in YAML um, and JSON and, and such. So it has a bit more flexibility in, in the metadata. Um, it's really easy to install as well. Like, um, Nikila has been quite hard to install in, in, in that in the past, but um, Hugo is quite easy. You can just apt get install Hugo and don't have to worry about any dependencies. So Nikila, um, it's named after Nikila Tesla. Um, he's, 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 um, yeah, uh, he's quite the geek. Uh, he in invented quite a, quite a few things like the fluorescent lighting, um, tes uh, Tesla induction motor and the coil um, and AC, um, amongst other things. And he's, he's very much underrepresented, um, I feel. So all about representing Nikita. OK, this is, this is Roberta. Um, he's the uh, creator of Nikila. Um, he's, um, he's, he's still developing it today. He's like lead, lead developer um, on, on it. But there's quite a, f quite a few other people that also work on it. Um, he's, um, he originally got into Python um, um, by uh, writing Python bindings for Xforms. Um, and he was doing lots of like network admin. Um, last time I heard, he was working for Canonical. Um, he's in Argentina. I'm not sure if he's still working for Canonical or not. But yeah, he's, he's very friendly. Like, um, you can talk, uh, send him emails and like, talk to him on the mailing list and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Great guy. OK, so um, Nikila is a static website and blog generator. Basically, it takes, takes some text and creates a folder of HTML fold, files. And then with the output um, that it creates, you can upload it to, um, to your web server. It's a fully featured website. Um, and the original goal of, of Nikila was to create um, blogs, especially technical blogs um, for people. OK, some stats on GitHub. So Nikila has, this was, this was done a, couple, um, a week or so ago. So it's probably a bit more than this now. But yeah, 8,700 commits and 76 releases and about 160 contributors. It's licensed under MIT. Um, it's got yeah, 57 closed issues and 1,006, oh, sorry, open, and 1,600 and, um, issues closed. Um, and it's been in development since March 2012. Um, OK, installing Nikila. Um, they recommend to have Python 3, um, 0.3 or, or higher. Um, they have actually recently dropped, dropped support for Python 2.7 partially. They still support it a little bit, but they really recommend um, using Python 3, um, which, is, which is good. Um, and of course, um, they recommend using a virtual environment um, and running it under that. Um, you can, um, for, for, for the um, markup languages, it, um, it supports a, a, a range of, of, of languages. You can, you can write your files in Markdown or RST. Um, it supports um, Jupyter Notebooks, which I, I'm, I'm quite the fan of Jupyter Notebooks. I've been, been using them for years. So um, that's one thing that really appealed to me with, with 
with Nikira was the fact I could just give it my notebooks and it would build uh, websites out of my notebooks. Okay, here's some, um, some commands. Um, to create a website, you just like, in the terminal, you would just type Nikila in it. Um, to do a new post, you this new post. Um, you could also do new page, it will create a new page. Um, and the killer build uh, creates the, the output folder. Um, if you want to run the web server, the killer serve, of course that's not recommended on production, you're better to use Apache or Nginx. Um, you could also import your uh, uh, WordPress website. This is like the command I run when I took my art website and turned it into a Nikila site. So yeah, just Nikila import WordPress and it just give it the XML and it does the rest. Okay, the kind of the structure for um, um, Nikila website. Um, so you, you do like Nikila in it and you say give it like my awesome site and um, you've got a, a galleries folder so you can put your images in, the, in there. Um, there's a, a posts folder, um, that's where you put your blog posts. Um, you've got pages, it's where you uh, put, put, your, put the files that don't show up on, on the timeline. Say you had like an about page or something like that, that's where you would put it. Uh, you've got themes, um, I'll get into that a bit later, a bit more, but that's where you could put um, various themes. Okay, so you've got your, your in, in, in there as well, you've also got your uh, config.py um, folder. So um, it's your, your, your config for, for the Nikila site. Um, it's got options for, uh, for your site title, URL, author, time zone. Um, you can put like your Creative Commons license in there and it will render it, that, that license and such. Um, you can specify the types of, of um, files that you want it to process. Say you only wanted it to process Markdown or RST um, files, you, you could type that in. Um, and you could also like specify the, the pages um, that you want processed. Uh, there's, there's lots more options in the config file. Meta files, they, they look like this, so um, you, can, you can choose to have your meta files separate from like, say your markdown files, or you can have it in one. Personally, I like to have them separately, um, but it's totally up to you. So you have a title, you have a slug, the date, you can have tags, the link and description, and the type. Um, some of them are optional. The ones you only really need is the title, the slug, and, and the date. Um, the others are all, all kind of optional. Um, you got plugins. Um, this is the, the URL here for plugins for, for Nikila. So um, one of them, for example, is a JSON feed to generate a JSON feed for your for Nikila blog. Um, plugins basically are just a dot plugin and a dot py file. Um, this is an example of a hello world dot plugin. Quite a, quite a simple. Um, um, example um, for this. Um, so yeah, you've got your name, the module, tests, um, and then some documentation like author and version, website description and such. Uh, this, is, this is what uh, the uh, exam uh, Hello World um, Python file would look like for the, for the plugin. Um, so um, you're, you're importing from the, um, the, uh, the, the Nikila library because you can just do like an import um, Nikila and work with um, Nikila and like in a, in a, in a Python um, file um, of that. And yeah, it's, it's that um, doing some um, logging. We've got this if by um, logger.notice by world else hello world. Um, so yeah, that's an example. Um, you've got themes. These are a limited range of themes. Um, they don't really have many designers working on the project, um, but they've got bootstrap themes which kind of just work fine. Eh? Like mine, my site, it's just kind of a default bootstrap theme. But I do like you can put like a logo on it and such, like replace the default text with a logo, which adds some flair to it. But yeah, there could be there could be more. Like I think Hugo's got it really good. They've got a huge around range of um, of themes and such. Um, this is an example of a couple of the, the themes that they have on, on the Nikila website. So you, there's, there's a few there to choose from in that. 
okay, um, do it. Um, they, they were having issues with Nikela a few years ago where it would take like an hour and a half to process the website and that. So they started, so they um, used this Python library called the do it, um, which um, sped up the process much faster in that. Um, so it only, it only processes the stuff that's been changed and stuff. Um, this is an example of um, the, like a simple do it um, script. So you would, you would save this as a Python file and then just um, run like in the command line do it dot hello dot py and it would it would run this um, coil CMS they've developed um, uh, for uh, uh, CMS um, manager for for Nikela so that you don't have to use the command line you can like open up the web browser and um, do it do it do it through the web browser so it's actually powered by Flask. Um, they've got a, a demo um, on online and stuff, and like the codes all there. Personally, myself, I've never used it, and that I'm quite happy with like command line or like writing scripts um, to process my websites. Um, one of the scripts I have written is Artsy Gallery. Um, I use this to like process my blogs, um, blog posts. So I basically have a folder of my artwork, and I, ha I have a config file. And um, the, in the config file, I specify like the, the name of the blog, the blog post, um, the folder where my images are, and um, yeah, and then I just run run the script, and it processes it, and basically uh, takes all those images and creates a markdown file out of it, and asks me for like comments on each piece of my artwork as it goes through. Um, so yeah, um, I've been working on that. For a while, um, and I've also been I, instead of using the date time library, I use the arrow library. Um, it's quite wonderful if, if you guys want to yeah check out check out the arrow library. It can it can do some quite cool stuff like humanize date and time, so it can if yeah, it can say like ah oh, this was an hour ago. It's quite a neat feature. Okay, um, my I've got another script with Nikila called um, Meme Generator. I, this is very similar to my my um, artsy gallery, but it generates memes. It's a config file where you give it like the meme title, the top text, and bottom text in the user. Um, and it basically um, grabs that, that meme name from a folder of images and the, um, generates the meme with the top text and bottom text. Um, it, it doesn't do watermarks, which really frustrates me, like in the examples and stuff like that, when people show their memes and that, they've got the water, watermarks on and that. It's like, um, so some examples of some Nikela sites, so my own site, artcontrol.me. One that popped up recently was colorofcosmos.com. Um, there's some quite beautiful like space photography um, and such, um, which is really nice. WX Python uses it, um, and Peter Rootman from Waikato University, he's been using it quite a bit. I've been quite happy because I've done this talk at, at the Hamilton Python user group in the past and got um, Peter using it, and like he even used it for like one of the one of the conferences, the machine learning conference that they had on at um, Waikato University. So it's just like, yeah, they start like actually using like really good like Python libraries like Nikila. It's good. Okay, um, that's all. I can do it. I can do a demo though. I've probably got heaps of time left, um, but that's all on the slides. Yeah, sure. So this is it. Um, so it's a logo there. You can see real flash. <laughs> this was from a actually art gallery in Sydney. Um, I um, recently went to. Um, most of these aren't actually mine. <laughs> oh, that's mine. It's Martin Place Fountain. That's, you might remember the, the Matrix, the girl in the, the red dress. Quite famous. So that's my site. So quite basic. Um, I can also show you, I can do a de uh, I'll do a demo of Nikila. Um, so you can just type Nikila in like this. Should go full screen. And 
in it to make a new 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 website. So destination, home, hi. Check it in there, site title, so call it Kiwi PyCon 2017. Site also William. Let's give it default on that, eh? Can't be bothered. You have to give it that. Comment. Okay, so that will be in there now, so we can go in here. So you can see there's that config file I was talking about before. You've got the galleries, posts, uh, and stories. They're actually supposed to be switching it across from stories to pages. Pages sounds so much better than stories, but it doesn't matter. We're doing, we're doing new posts, so kill a new post. So we'll um, hi Kiwi PyCon. Um, oh, so it'll be in posts here, so we could edit that. So you, see, so you can see that's the, the metadata all over here, and we just edit this. Save that, um, and then we can run the killer build. Just takes a minute. It's, see, it's creating the output folder. So if we go back there, you can see now there's the output folder. So we can just do the killer serve. I think it runs on port 8000. Yeah. So local host port 8000. So there we go. Just like that. Fast. <laughs> Not as fast as Hugo, but fast. Can you do navigation links between sites? Yep, they've got, uh, you've got archive, uh, you mean like archives? Navigation links? Oh, yeah, you can just hit the title screen at the top. Oh, it will take me to example.com there. Mm-hmm. Would you have a link, say, carrying on from my previous blog post, uh, that link to your previous one? Yeah. Yeah, you could, you could do it. Then you put that in the mark Yeah, well, you could just type links into your mark eh? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to link to, like, any website or anything like that, your previous blog post, you would just put that in your mark, oh. markdown file. Yeah, like kind of like template thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you could you could do it. Yeah, as long uh, especially if you were like generating that that, that that markdown and stuff, so it would like generate a certain like certain content on the markdown file each time, eh? And then you would just add to it. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking of taking my site. How you can. Um, I also I use it for this uh, for my meme generator. I'm sorry, the text is really small, um, but if someone can yell out a meme that they like, a meme. Hey, anyone? Grumpy cat. Okay. Okay. So we put that in the meme name. And I need the top text for Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Done all at once. Hey. <laughs> and bottom text. <laughs> Would rather use Python. I don't know if email. Oh, oh. 
me just save that. Probably wait about 10 seconds. Over script, it's like, like runs every 10 seconds. Uh, it checks. It checks to see if this file's been changed, and if it's been changed, then it runs. So it'll be on here. There you go. Neat. <laughs> so so that, that, that's, that's running on Nikia. So it built, in that time when I wrote it in and stuff like that, it, it built like, the Nikia site. Yeah. So I'll I'll bring up the plugin website. Um, like one of the plugins for like say you're like importing um, from various um, different sources. Like that import WordPress was actually a plugin. This is them all here, all available plugins. Oh, sorry, the text is small. Oh. It's better. So those are all the import ones. It can like compile I IRC logs and stuff. Like the Nikila site, it has like all the archives of like Nikila IRC on their website. And so, yeah, they'll use that for, um, for, for, for their site. I actually don't use any plugins myself. They can be malicious. Yeah, like, it allows you to step into the process of taking the input. I'm just waiting for the output. But to put a stupid example, if you wanted to import from the pirate data, if you wanted to say, make all your words into pirate form, you, you could have a pirate plugin. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it just it just allows you to to, to to write plugins for it and stuff, eh? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's anything out there like it for it yet. So you might have to work on it, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a feature request, day eh, for them. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of plugins there. Any more questions? Yes. Oh, I'll show you. I can. I can show you what it looks like. Um, it's you. Um, you basically um, in, in giving it. Um, it's, you don't need a plugin for it. Actually, you can just give it your like IPython notebook, and then the metadata that goes with it, and it, it generates. It generates it. You just give it your IP. Uh, your, your, your your notebook. You kind of need to give it like well, you could like download it to like say you, if you downloaded the notebook to like your local thing from your GitHub and then process it through that might be easier. I don't know about processing it directly on GitHub. Yeah, but sorry, say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is what it looks like, um, like um, an IPython notebook as in the killer website, eh? So quite similar to um, just like the Markdown and stuff, except it is it is a notebook. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, you can, and they accept new themes and stuff. If you develop a new theme and stuff and want to share it with them, they'll, they'll add it to their repository. And they're quite desperate for new themes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the themes and, could it, yeah. See, so nothing, nothing too special here, right?
Yep. And you don't have to reconnote the whole site. No, no, it only, it only changes like um, what, you cha what, what, what you change. Mm, that's what they do it, yeah, it, it keeps track of like what you've changed and stuff like that, yeah. I'll see that. Well, you've got your output here. So you could, you could do, put that wherever you wanted. You could, um, oh, like, you could just async it if you wanted to. But they actually do have, like, deploy commands. I haven't had a good play with them, but this is a config file I was telling about before. They, it's the authors and default. Um, they, oh, they support languages. They're pretty good about supporting different languages and transition, uh, translations. Um, it's, a, it's the navigation links. That's what you're talking about before, was it? Navigation link? Yeah. Like at the top of the bar? That's it there. So you just edit the, the config file, and you could just put in whatever you wanted there. Yeah. And that's where you change the theme as well. It's time zone. Uh, I could go down. Uh, that's, that's a post. Like if you wanted to, to do IPython notebooks, you would change it from, from that or add it in. Like that, and then that would support IPython notebooks. You can also get rid of, you can turn it from, rather than it's serving it as a blog, you could just turn it serving as, as pages and stuff, get rid of the whole blog thing and actually just show like a page when you first go to the website. Good if you like, yeah, if you just want it, rather than showing the blog, show uh, just a, a, a normal page. Um, oh, that's the, the compilers, the different compilers that it supports. Uh, one file posts. I quite often turn that on if you want, like, if you don't want the separate or um, met metadata, if you just want one, um, one, one file. You were talking about the deploying. Oh, there's the logo URL. I haven't answered that deploying thing yet. I'm sure there's an option in here about like a command that it would run when you. Um, here you go. Commands to execute to deploy. So you can deploy commands, so, yeah. That's, is that, is that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can sync it to like GitHub and or like, yeah, wherever you want. Yeah, yeah, quite popular with that. Then there's the, um, oh, and they've got options for the GitHub um, source as well if you wanted to, to put it up at the point to get heaven and stuff. Um, output folder if you wanted to change it from output to something different. Um, SAS, Galleries. Showed, I could, yeah, showed, showed you galleries a little bit. But yeah, so options to change gallery settings. I have no idea what some of those things are. Fave icon. Hey. Oh, that's. Let's read more. License. So you can put your Creative Commons license if you want. And content footer. You can change that if you want. Change whatever's on your, on your footer. Comment system. You can change your comment system. Yes. Mm. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, mm. I'm just curious, have you come across someone who said to you, oh yes, well that's all very well, but this uh, WordPress does something, mm. uh, which is not public. Have you come across this information, having tags for a, a non tag yeah. blogging site like WordPress? It can be quite hard to like move from other things. Oh, like if because you can't, it's kind of hard to move from, say, like, Nikila to Hugo uh, sometimes. Like, well, if, you, if your site was in WordPress, you might be able to import it into Hugo much easier. Right. Stuff like that, maybe. Right. Um, yeah.
you should definitely look at static site generator rather than writing the HTML way, especially because you could put it as a notebook in the array, so it will render your code quite beautifully. It's, it's, all, it's all mobile friendly, eh? Yeah. Thing. There you go, it would look great on mobile. Sitemap.xml, yeah. Is there a search tool available that you can search this part? You've got this. Um, here's the sitemap.xml. Oh, it's search. Um, yeah, I think it is possible to put a search, search button in it. Mm. But you've got archives as well. But yeah, you could put a search in it. I would have They got rid of that though. <laughs> On the side, eh? Yeah. So I sort, I sort by images by month and then day. Oh, year, month, day. Keynote. What keynote was that? Keep me calling. Yeah, they're all there. Any more questions? Kind of done, eh? Bit early. I've previously, when I've done this talk, it's finished in 15 minutes. So I think I've done pretty well to like keep on going. Yeah. Thank you.